This channel is all about the things that happen when you dump the pump and choose a cleaner, greener, safer and smarter form of travel. I mean, it is why we have the words transport and evolved in our channel title. Because, you know, we, we want you to evolve your energy and transportation choices. And yes, while it could be a pun on the whole trans thing, it's just a happy coincidence. Dumping the pump and choosing electrified transport comes with some pretty big benefits like paying less to run your chosen vehicle, enjoying a smoother, quieter ride and being able to fuel up from power you generate at home from renewable energy sources. But there is still one Achilles heel to owning an EV. Charging. Not only can at-home charging be a pain to figure out if you rent rather than own your home, or you happen to live in either an apartment complex or a busy city, but public charging infrastructure isn't exactly all that reliable unless you own a Tesla. In fact, in some parts of the world, you have less chance of finding a vacant, functional rapid charging station than winning at a crooked Dabo table at your local Quarks. Unless you're Ensign Bradford Boimler. That, that boy got skills. To be fair, both slower destination style and rapid charging stations are now vastly more numerous than they were a decade ago, when going anywhere long distance required you to carry significant amounts of copper junk in your trunk. And if you live within easy access of a large metropolitan area, the chances are you will be able to find a place to charge. But if you're venturing cross country or you happen to like going off the beaten trail, there's no substitute for a good, all-round portable charging unit. At one point, automakers gave you one for free with your electric car, but as EV battery packs have gotten larger and inflation has risen, more and more automakers are opting to offer portable charging units, otherwise known as granny cables, as optional extras you can buy, rather than free standard fit items. Getting a free, basic, often slow emergency cable with your EV is one thing, but being asked to pay several hundred dollars or more for one? That is less than ideal. And in the last few years, we've looked at several portable charging station solutions that scratch that itch, offering specific charging solutions for EV owners who either can't fit a permanent charging station at home or need a portable charging station when they're on the road. The gold standard of portable charging to date has been the Tesla Mobile Charging Connector, a super svelte, well-engineered unit that offered an entire range of interchangeable power plugs to allow Tesla owners to charge their cars from whatever power outlet they happened across. The first generation of those were so popular that a cottage industry even grew up that replaced the Tesla charging connector used in North America with a standard J1772 socket so that non-Tesla owners could enjoy the benefits of a really bloody well-made mobile charging solution. A few companies even tried to mimic Tesla, but none have come close until now because we've been using a charging connector for the last six months that I think blows everything else out of the water. A charging solution that is smartly made, super strong, and doesn't require you to bodge things together to limp to the nearest starbase for a retrofit. But I think there's a better place to discuss this. So meet me in the shop because I rarely get as excited about a product as I am about to get about the thing we've had on review for the last six months. We're back in the shop. Thank you to my wife, Kate, for letting us film in here. And yes, this is a woodworking shop. And so it's quite dusty in there. So if I have dust on me, that is why. But anyway, it's making woodworky things. So there is lots of dust around. Anyway, this is the J Plus Booster. It is a mobile charging station that combines the flexibility of the original Tesla mobile charging connector with a rugged, waterproof, cylindrical electronics box and a standard J1772 
plug. If you live in a market where Menenkes or Type 2 inlets are the preferred design, the same company also makes the Juice Booster 2, which is a similar design to this, but of course has a different charging plug on it. There are a few other differences between both models, but I'll come to those shortly. Like any EV charging unit, portable or wall mounted, there are some electronics in here that are required to ensure that charging can take place safely. This includes things like communication to make sure that the car has correctly plugged in and is ready to receive power, as well as over current protection and other gubbins. Most portable EV charging units hide that all inside a fairly rugged plastic box that's properly sealed from the elements, but Juice has put everything inside this cylindrical aluminium case that is heavy duty and rubberized with cable entries at both ends. It is IP67 rated and according to the company can be driven over by a tank without braking. I don't have a tank to hand, although one of my friends back in the UK owns several. Hi Lauren! But let's just say this is the most rugged unit we have ever tested and yes, I did drive over this a few times in my pickup truck. On the front of this very rugged cylinder is a very simple, easy to read interface that lets you know if there's an issue to prevent charging, like a fault with the vehicle, an overcurrent event or something else. And there's this little button here that allows you to dial down the charging power. It is really useful if you are someone who likes to go camping, for example, and wants to charge your car up at the campsite, but the power outlet you've parked by seems to have a unhealthy amount of rust on it and you're pretty sure the last electrician to work on the socket retired when you were still mastering the concept of eating. Side note, just like you won't put on underwear with skid marks in them, you really shouldn't plug in and pull full power from a power outlet with visible scorch marks and rust. Exactly how much power you'll be able to pull out of the charging station does depend on the type of outlet you're plugging into, as well as how much power your vehicle can accept, of course. It also depends on where you are in the world and the unit you purchased. Here in North America, where your average household socket can offer a measly 1.32 kilowatts of power, and three-phase power is something that you probably only have if you own a McMansion, a farm, or have a fully kitted out high-end workshop, you'll end up buying this, which is rated to charge at up to 9.6 kilowatts single phase when equipped with the right plug and vehicle combination. That's basically 40 amps at 240 volts. In Europe and other countries where the Type 2 charging is the standard, you'll end up buying a Juice Booster 2, which is capable of charging at up to 22 kilowatts three phase again that does rely on you having the right car and the right plug combination how do the units know what type of outlet you're plugged into well that's down to this end where there's a push fit connector that plugs into a variety of different pigtails from the plug that you want to plug into these pigtails which the company calls j plus connectors can be locked to the unit with a combination lock to prevent theft. Here in North America we get eight different options that plug into various different outlets, automatically restricting maximum charging power so you don't pull more than the outlet is capable of providing. In Europe and other Type 2 markets around the world you get a whole range of both single and three-phase connectors that again tell the unit what the maximum theoretical power is that it can pull. And I do say theoretical because like I say you may be plugging into a less than stellar outlet with commitment issues. It also makes charging much less of a hassle and a whole lot more safe if you're using the correct adapter and not any weird adapter plugs that you made up in your grand's garage. At this point I'm guessing that it does sound a little bit like this is inf infomercial and I'm sorry if that is the case but legitimately we have collectively put this through hell and back and it's still looking great and working fine. 
even if it has sawdust on it now. When the team and I were driving down to Fully Charge Live in San Diego, we used this unit to charge the F-150 Lightning at several of our overnight stops, where there were NEMA 14-50 outlets like this in the parking lot. That's because the Ford charging cable supplied with my truck only outputs 30 amps, as opposed to the 40 amps that this one is capable of, and that meant we were actually able to fully charge overnight while we were at each hotel. Our review unit came with a NEMA 14-50. That's the one you would plug into a modern 240 volt split phase outlet in the US that you might use for a stove or a modern dryer and also a standard US household socket. I should point out though that this unit, thanks to the electronics box, well, it's a little on the heavy side. So you really shouldn't be hanging it using this or this from any high up outlets without supporting it. Luckily for a more permanent installation at home, there is this, which is a lockable wall bracket included in the standard kit. And you can also clip the holster in there. This allows you to opt for a semi-permanent installation option. And if you are a renter, this might be a good way of getting the charging station installed in your garage without requiring a full-blown electrical installation. And of course, with plenty of these type of choices available for a variety of different sockets, you might be lucky enough to find one that matches the outlets that are already in situ. My biggest criticism, and it is a big one, is the size. Because this thing is rated to carry up to 9.6 kilowatts, the cable is kind of beefy, and this beautiful, lovely carrying case that it comes with, it's a bit large. In fact, this is the largest carry case that I have ever seen for a portable charging unit. And if you have an EV with a small load bay or frunk, it might not leave you with a whole lot of space. However, you probably are not gonna carry it around all the time. And if you are road tripping, this is a must because it means you can charge wherever you can find an outlet. If you really want to, you can also buy custom skins to make this look like something other than the lovely gray aluminum it is if you are so inclined, which I'm clearly not. Then, there is the matter of price. Here in North America, you are looking at just shy of 700 US dollars for the base unit, which includes the carry case, the NEMA 1450 adapter, the wall hanger, as well as the standard US adapter for your home and a 21 foot cable. There is a slightly long cable, the 25 foot variant, which of course costs more, and you have to pay for these extra connectors beyond the two included if you need them. And that is pretty darned expensive for a portable charging unit. But I should point out, this is certified carbon neutral. You get a little certificate in it. And the fact that this is UL rated, which is something most cheaper charging units are not, I think this is well worth it in my opinion. And if you are looking for a flexible charging solution for your car, it's really worth considering. Yes, this is a higher end premium product, but I honestly think if you were to buy one of these, it might be the only EV charging cable that you will ever need. That is it for today. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to leave your thoughts below or in our free to join Discord chat room. There are links in the video description. And if you like today's video, why not leave us a super thanks? It is easy to do and everything you send goes towards helping us make great content. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribed to this channel and to our other channel, Transport Evolved Take Two, and give that bell a gentle ding to be told when our next video goes live. And before I go, do check out our regular sponsors. There are links below. If you use any of those companies and the relevant codes associated with them, you will be helping the channel out too. Thanks on behalf of the entire crew. Go out to everyone who makes this channel possible. That includes those of you who support us on Patreon and YouTube, as well as those of you who just watch and share it. If you are a supporter at the Charged Up level, you'll see your name right here on my right. And if you have just joined and your name isn't showing, we currently render the list every week or so. 
and I have no other excuse because this is being filmed the day before we publish it. Anyway, thanks to our self-driving tier supporters, Mike Weida, Patrick Boyarski, Chris Maxwell, Brian Newton, Michael Goad, Bennett Elder, Andrew Martin, Pedro Muapinheiro, Brophy Wolf, Chris and Michael Johnson, Tesla in the Gong, Dan Blair, Peter Dillinger, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Ray Jean Fellows, Denny Hyde, Chris Asenta and Jim Vanessa. And of course, super out of this world support to our Starman level supporters, Andrew Glenn, Anonymous Freak, JP Fagerback, Joe Bresney, John Lyons, Rory Litwin, Kevin Burbridge, Dave Kitchen, Laura Reynolds, Marcel Ward, Matthew Drobnak, Paul Conway, Reggie Watts, Will Graylin and... Ian, if you'd like to be part of that amazing list, you can join Patreon at the link below, hit the join button to support us on YouTube, or show us your support through Bitcoin, Kofi, or buying a cool t-shirt like this from our swag store. Links below. And if you are unable to support us financially, just know that watching this video and sharing it really does make a massive difference to how well our videos perform. Thank you to Juice for providing this to us for review. Thank you for watching. And as always, keep evolving.